Hello everybody, this is the April 20th, 2020 lecture. Um, last day we started talking uh, about the Claisen condensation reaction and I left you with what I call the cliffhanger. I'm sure you guys were really torn up about it. Um, why do we use a ethoxide base that is similar to the OR group on the ester instead of hydroxide and water on that? And the reason for this is that the water and hydroxide would hydrolyze the ester to the carboxylic acid. This would lead to a mixture of products, which is not what you want in any reaction. So this is why we use that base. Shown here now is the mechanism of the Claisen condensation. Ethoxide generates the enolate by pulling off the alpha proton. This enolate is, of course, resonance stabilized. Hopefully you're getting sick of hearing that. You just now assume this. Um, this enolate can now <clears throat> nucleophilically attack another ester. It does this, it generates the tetrahedral intermediate shown here. This tetrahedral intermediate, when it decomposes, that is the reformation of the carbonyl group, it could lose the enolate, of course, or it could lose ethoxide. In this particular case, the ethoxide is the better leaving group. And what happens is this generates this alpha um, beta dicarbonyl system and this reaction now continues. Now you can see here on the sheet that I've drawn all of the reactions being in equilibrium or reversible. And the reason for this is that they all are indeed reversible in this particular case. But if this second deprotonation occurs and it generates this resonant stabilized enolate intermediate, now the reaction is going to be stopped. Uh, and once you do the acid water workup, you'll obtain the product that you want. If you do not have this alpha proton that can be pulled off, it turns out that the reaction yields are poor because you cannot pull the equilibrium for this system of reactions in the direction of product. So sometimes the substrate you use for a reaction will really make a difference in the outcome of that reaction. So um, this is just uh, a type of Claisen condensation. Shown at the top of the next page is a Claisen condensation where there will be no alpha protons. And all I've labeled is that you can form some of this product. However, the yields will be poor and you really want to be able to deprotonate it. So shown is a similar species to the one above. Um, and this reaction will proceed quite well. I've used um, an O-methyl ester in this case, so we had to change our base to sodium methoxide in methanol. But at any rate, the reaction works well and we form the beta dicarbonyl product that we're looking for. Now, you're gonna see that we're, we're following kind of the same formula that we followed with respect to the aldol condensation reaction. And the aldol condensation reaction, and one of the next things that we talked about was a mixed aldol. And we're gonna talk about a mixed Claisen condensation. So again, the enolate reactions are a well-studied set of reactions. And you're gonna see kind of the same pattern with how things were developed and the types of reactions that they can perform. So in a mixed aldol reaction, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the yields of the desired product are greatly increased if one of the esters does not have any alpha protons. And this is same was stated for the mixed aldol. So here in this case, you can see that um, we've generated this ethyl benzoate ester. This is gonna be one of our species. Of course, there are no alpha protons here. And as a result, this is going to be the one where the enolate is always going to attack. We're going to treat it with sodium ethoxide and ethanol. And probably for this reaction, the um, ethyl propanoate here is going to be added slowly to the reaction. So its concentration is never very high and it will not react with itself to create byproducts that you don't want. Now, in this case, you generate this um, beta dicarbonyl product and we have now a usable product that has very different functionality at different points in the structure. Okay, now another reaction <clears throat> is the Dieckmann condensation. You might look at this and go, this is just an intramolecular Claisen. It is. It was developed independently approximately the same time the Claisen reaction was developed. So it has got a separate name, but it's still the same type of reaction. Um, in the notes, you see I've, I've 
highlighted a certain carbon and I've highlighted one of the carbonyl groups. Um, the enolate will be generated in on the pink carbon. It could just as well be generated in this position and have the reaction go in the other direction. The product would be exactly the same, but for the purposes of the notes, I just highlighted it in this fashion. The enolate's generated, it reacts, it forms the cyclic system, and we now have an alpha beta um, dicarbonyl system that is part of a ring structure. Okay, as with every other discussion we've had about ring formation reactions, five and six membered rings are going to be favored in these types of reactions. Okay, so um, that is this. We can also perform mixed clasion reactions with ketones. So in this particular case, uh, we have uh, an Sorry, the sunlight in the corner was bothering me. Um, we have acetone and we have our uh, ethyl ethanoate, I guess. We're going to treat this with a slightly stronger base. And what we're going to find is that the enolate is always going to be generated on the ketone. Okay, not a problem. Um, we can do this and the reaction works fine. But why does the ketone always form the enolate? And the reason for this is that ketones are considered to be more acidic on the alpha position than are esters. And this is rationalized by the fact that um, a carbonyl group, if it resonance occurs, the positive charge is fully on the alpha position. Whereas in an ester, if you see resonance, the ox other oxygen could donate lone pair electrons and it makes the carbonyl group less um, electron withdrawing than it does in a ketone. So this is why this reaction occurs the way it does. So the enolate is generated, nucleophilically attacks the ester, and we form this beta dicarbonyl system that is a diketone essentially. Okay, reactions now. We've, we've discovered lots of ways to make beta dicarbonyl systems. They must be useful. So in this particular case, we're gonna now start doing some of the reactions. And what we find is with beta dicarbonyl systems, because of the acidity of the alpha position, um, the anion that you generate or the enolate that you generate is not that super reactive. Um, what do we mean? Well, remember the harder it is to make something, generally the more reactive it is. And in this case, because this is fairly acidic, it's not going to be quite as reactive. So what we can see is instead of the enolate acting as a base or having to have something that's very electrophilic present with it, it can react in more selective ways. And so you can see it undergoing SN2 type reactions. So um, we generate the enolate and we methylate this alpha position now. We, we can do it a second time as well if we treat this with terp-butoxide and then another alkyl halide, in this case benzyl bromide, and we see the addition of this. And we've created now a very complex system. Okay, so this is a reaction that is going to involve generation of these types of things. Okay, now if we have these alpha, beta, unsaturated, these, excuse me, if we have these beta dicarbonyl systems where one is an ester, the next thing we can do is we can also decarboxylate them. So in this particular case, if we were to hydrolyze under basic conditions, the ester to the carboxylic acid, now if we heat this material, we can actually see decarboxylation and the generation now of a highly substituted ketone type system. So this is used to generate complex ketone systems. And of course, if we had diesters, we could generate complex carboxylic acids as well. So underneath this is the acetoacetic acid, or excuse me, acetoacetic ester synthesis. And this is for the formation of methyl ketones. And again, the chemistry here is everything that we've been seeing recently. We generate an ester. We then treat this with an alkyl halide, in this case, one bromobutane. And now we generate our substituted species. We can hydrolyze it to the carboxylic acid and then remove the carboxylate group to generate this ketone. Or we could add a second carbonyl group, or excuse me, a second alkyl group, to generate this species, which then we subsequently hydrolyze and decarboxylate. So we can generate now a variety of ketone species. In this case, they're all methyl ketone. 
melonic ester synthesis. Here we have a diester species. Again, we have a very reactive alpha position, which we can alkylate. The conditions for this reaction are very similar to everything that we've seen so far. And then we can um, hydrolyze these to the dicarboxylic acid and then subsequently decarboxylate to generate this species. Okay, so here is a reaction involving those components. We have a diester that we are treating with base to generate the enolate in this position. This enolate will then attack this one bromonanane species, which will then um, add a long alkyl chain. We then hydrolyze the uh, two esters and treat this with sulfuric acid and heat, and we decarboxylate and we generate this complex carboxylic acid. So we have now the method to generate complex methyl ketones and carboxylic acids. Okay, next we're going to take our beta dicarbonyl systems and treat them with alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl groups. Um, this reaction is still called the Michael addition, so a happy memory for all of us. Um, this is another reaction that takes advantage of the nucleophilic character of enolates. So we generate the enolate here, it attacks the beta position of this alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl group, and we generate an intermediate that looks like this. So we have, an inter we have a species now that has a lot of functional groups on it that we can continue to modify. So this becomes a way of coupling together different things and generating a more complex system. Um, the Novonagel condensation, again, this is a lot like the aldol condensation, but because you're using a beta dicarbonyl ester or the malonic ester, um, in this particular case, it has a slightly different name, so the Novonagel condensation. And once again, we're going to generate the enolate. We don't need a very strong base, so we're just using an amine. And this is going to nucleophilically attack uh, the carbonyl system of this aldehyde, and it intermittent. Um, as an intermediate, it generates this aldol type product, and then after dehydration, we form this alkene. So now we not only have aromatic, we not only have the aromatic ring, an alkene, and carbonyl groups, we can modify all of this and start generating um, more complex structures. And this is part of what synthesis is about, is the idea of generating something that can be further modified. So you want to leave reactive functionality in the species itself. Okay, so um, moving on to what is going to be the last page of this particular set of notes, and I'm going to wait a while to do the next lecture so that we don't have sunlight on the paper. Um, the preparation of alpha hydroxy ketones. Now this is an interesting problem. Now shown over here is an alpha hydroxy ketone. Now this seems like it should be a relatively easy thing to generate because you would take an aldehyde, in this case formaldehyde, and some acyl anion and react them together and you should be able to get this product relatively easily. However, the formation of acyl anions chemically in the lab is a lot more difficult than you might expect. Now, generation of acyl anions is relatively simple using mass spec, and you can actually see evidence for them in mass spec, but in the lab, we have a great deal of difficulty doing this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a masked acyl anion. I've just called it a mass an an masked anion here, but it, that's what it is. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take formaldehyde and we're gonna treat it with this dithiol. This is gonna generate a th um, a thioacetal for us, sorry. Um, and the interesting thing about this is this thioacetal with these two sulfur groups here, this uh, methylene group actually becomes somewhat more acidic as a pKa of approximately 31. Now this is not super acidic by any stretch of the imagination, but it's certainly chemically accessible to us in the lab. So what we'll do is we'll treat this with a strong base, butyl lithium, we'll deprotonate, and now what we've done is we've generated our massed acyl anion, which we can tack as a nucleophile, so we treat it with an aldehyde of some sort. We do an acid water workup, and we create this alpha hydroxy species. Now in the past, the thioacetals, we've always treated with uh, rainy nickel and hydrogen. And what this has done has basically made the sulfur and carbonyl group disappear. In this particular case, we're gonna reverse the thioacetal formation by treating it with water, mercuric chloride, calcium carbonate, and um, acetonitrile. And that will generate the alpha hydroxy carbonyl system that we're working towards generating. 
So what we've done in this reaction is we've essentially turned a carbon that is usually very electrophilic into a nucleophilic species, which is pretty cool. Um, so this finishes today's lecture. Everybody have a great day and I'll see you next time.